Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the neuroanatomy of the vestibulocochlear nerve, also called eighth cranial nerve. Its name is vestibulocochlear nerve. It has two components vestibular component and cochlear component. The vestibular component maintains, bal maintains balance. The cochlear components mediates the sense of hearing. The eighth cranial nerve is a sensory nerve that is the special somatic afferent nerve. It is located in the brain stem at the junction between the pons and medulla oblongata. This is the pons, this is the medulla oblongata and it is lateral to the facial nerve. This is the facial nerve. This is the vestibulocochlear nerve. This nerve enters the internal acoustic meatus of the temporal bone and is confined to the temporal bone. It does not come out of the temporal bone. Okay. So the vestibular nerve it has four nuclei, lateral, medial, superior, and inferior nuclei. And these nuclei are located in the floor of the fourth ventricle. This is essential for balance and equilibrium in concert with cerebellum. So fiber from the vestibular nuclei goes to the cerebellum. From the cerebellum, fiber come back to the vestibular nuclei. It regulates compensatory eye movement because vestibular nerve is connected to the medial longitudinal fasciculus and medial longitudinal fasciculus is a fasciculus between the third, fourth, sixth and eighth cranial nerve. Has the first order sensory bipolar neuron. For our special sense, we have the bipolar neuron. One is one, one part of that neuron is the axon, another part is the dendrite okay has a first order sensory bipolar neuron in the vestibular ganglion of the internal acoustic meatus ganglion is the collection of nerve cells outside the central nervous system it is in the internal acoustic meatus okay so we got that now the vestibular nerve projects peripheral processes to the utricle, secule, and semicircular canal receptors. These are called hair cells. They are located in this place. We have the semicircular canal, we have the utricle, secule, okay. Projects central processes to the vestibular nuclei and the cerebellum. So from there, we'll get the central processes going to the vestibular nuclei some of them is going to the cerebellum okay and some of them returning back from the cerebellum okay there is also is 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 working here so both way connection to the cerebellum so we got that now if you go to the passage of the pathway if in would like to go to the pathway then the, from the vestibular nuclei it should go to the thalamus thalamus has ventral posterior inferior nu inferior nucleus and also ventral ventral posterior lateral nucleus through this nucleus we have, the, we have the beginning of third order neuron going to the cerebral cortex to the area number two in the lower part of the post central gyrus just above the superior temporal gyrus area so it is in the post central gyrus in the area number two okay so we got here first order neuron then from the vestibular nuclei to the thalamus second order neuron from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex to the area number two the lower part of the post central gyrus there is the third order neuron. Descending fibers from the vestibular nuclei is projected to the spinal cord as vestibulospinal tract. We need the spinal cord 
contrib contribution in the maintenance of equilibrium and balance. So that is done by the vestibulospinal tract from the lateral vestibular nucleus. It, it goes to the spinal cord. Okay. So what are the chemical correlations of the vestibular nerve? If there is a lesion in the vestibular nerve, what will happen? There will be disequilibrium. Person cannot maintain the equilibrium. There will be vertigo. There is dizziness. Okay. There will be nystagmus. Why nystagmus? What is that? There is the uncontrolled rhythmic oscillation of the eye due to disturbance in the reflex control of extraocular muscle. Why? Because our vestibular nerve is connected to the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Medial longitudinal fasciculus is a fasciculus that connects multiple nerves like that of the oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve and the abducens nerve. So those nerve and the muscle supplied by those nerve will not work. So there will be nystagma, uncontrolled rhythmic oscillation of the eye. Okay, we'll go to the cochlear nerve, cochlear nerve for the sense of hearing or audition. Okay, first order neurons are the bipolar neuron like other special sense, sense pathway in the spiral cochlear ganglion in the temporal bone. Okay, this is a spiral ganglion. This is a spiral ganglion also called cochlear ganglion. We have the peripheral processes projected to the hair cells of the organ of corti. In the cochlea, we'll get the, the scala vestibuli and also we'll get the cochlear area, okay, the scala tympani, scala vestibuli, and we have the organ of corti present in the cochlea, okay. From the organ of corti, there will be that organ of corti is connected to the to the efferent neurons of the spiral ganglion. Okay, so from there, central processes will project it to the to the to the posterior, that is the dorsal and the anterior or ventral cochlear nuclei. Here, these are two. They are connected to the trapezoid body here, trapezoid body. So it may be ipsilateral. It may be contralateral. From the trapezius, it will ascend through the lateral lemniscus. There may be synapse in the nucleus of the lateral lemniscus. Okay. Some fiber is connected to the inferior colliculus of the midbrain. Okay. Here is the inferior colliculus of the midbrain. And some further, some, some of the nerve fiber will go through the medial geniculate body. Remember, this is medial geniculate body for the for the cochlear pathway, Medi the lateral geniculate body for visual pathway. So here, medial geniculate body. Okay, then there will be there will be a relay in the thalamus. From thalamus, we'll get we'll we'll get the third order neuron that will go to the temporal gyrus to the superior temporal gyrus. The 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 temporal gyrus that is the auditory area in the superior temporal gyrus it will end up there okay so peripheral processes are projected to the hair sense of the organ of corti of the cochlea here we have organ of corti in the cochlea central processes are projected to the dorsal and ventral the same as anterior and posterior cochlear nuclei of the pons okay So we got the pathway. Now we have to remember that we have some descending fibers that originating in the auditory cortex. That is the area 41, 42, that is in the superior temporal gyrus. And in the nuclei of the auditory pathway, pathway, we have some descending fiber. These fibers are bilateral. Okay. And end on nerve cell at different levels of auditory pathway and on the hair cells of the organ of corti. What is the purpose of the descending fiber? Descending fiber actually avoid unnecessary noises. It sharpens the sound. It is essential to make a 
to make make a precise and the sharp sound we need the descending fiber so what are the features of cochlear nerve lesion cochlear nerve lesion result in sensory neural deafness or hearing loss so it is not a conductive type of deafness there is nothing is blocking here there is damage to the nerve and that nerve is essential for sensory neural hearing part so that if that, that is damaged there will be sensory neural deafness we'll also have patient will complain of tinnitus what is tinnitus a noise in the ear such as ringing buzzing roaring or clicking in the ear that is tinnitus so in case of vestibular dysfunction we will have loss of equilibrium and nystagma in case of cochlear lesion we will have that the sensory neural deafness and tinnitus okay and that's all about the neuroanatomy of the vestibular cochlear nerve if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and please support my channel have a nice day bye now please again requesting you to support my channel and subscribe me bye now